This is the Level Up Podcast. I'm Taylor Petrinovich. And I'm Kelly Gilster of 618 Studios. And we are on a mission to help filmmakers level up their businesses and their craft so they can make more and work less. We want to help you confidently take your business from mainstream to luxury, and it all starts right here. Hey friends, welcome to another conversation on the podcast today. I am joined by my co-host, Kelly Gilster. Hi everyone. And today, as we enter wedding season, at least here in the US, we thought it would be a really fun conversation to talk about kind of some of our do's and don'ts of preparing for a wedding day. So we're gonna be covering essentially a week leading up to a wedding day so that we can have the best success Um, with mindset and gear and the filming process as we can so we can best serve our clients and use the content and those relationships that we form on the wedding day to then level up our own businesses. But first, Kelly, how are you doing today? I am doing pretty well, actually. Um, my, I think I mentioned earlier that my husband and I joined a new gym and it has like a variety of classes and we're each finding our flow that has like boxing that Paul likes. Um, I like spin. There's also this one called CS4, which is kind of like a hit workout slash Orange Theory, if you're familiar with Orange Theory. And we're feeling super strong heading into wedding season, which was the goal. And we're just, we're just proud of ourselves, I guess. What about you, Taylor? Amazing. Yeah. Rocking those 1DX Mark IIs, you kind of have to have some strong upper body, <laughs> um, especially with the Ronin. So I... I film with that too, and I don't really want a sore shoulder um, at the end of a wedding weekend, but actually you inspired me a few weeks ago. We were talking about your juice cleanse, and I was like, oh my gosh, look at the calendar. It will be summer soon, and um, I don't know about you, but so I've had three kids, and I am done having kids, and now I feel like I'm like turning inward and like working on myself a little bit. And I'm like, all right, let's 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 have a hot girl summer here. Um, <laughs> is that cringe to say? I don't know. But um, so I'm kind of getting my mindset that way too. We have a home gym. Um, so we have like a full like squat rack and a rowing machine and like all these things at home, which makes it easy to just pop down there in the morning before the kids get up. And yeah, that's, that's what's new with me. <laughs> cool. Good for you. That would be really fun. You're entering, I think what the kids are saying these days is like you're entering your you era. Like, I think for me right now, like, I'm kind of in my flop era, as the kids would call it. I'm trying, that's why I'm trying, (laughs) doing the juice, I'm in my flop era, that's what they say. I'm going to get, doing my juice cleanse, doing my gym time, I'm getting out of my flop era. You're thriving, you're thriving, look (laughs) at you, you're glowing. If you're watching on YouTube, look how beautiful (laughs) Kelly looks today, she is stunning. It's just the hair and the makeup, but I don't have the eyelashes like Taylor. I need to, I need to level up and get on that eyelash game. Anyways, but let's dive into the conversation about how to prepare for the week of a wedding. It's, I don't know about you, but I always get a little giddy the week of a wedding. I'm excited. You've led up, you know, a year in advance sometimes, even more at other times. And, um, so I think we want to talk about like just actionable steps you can take to set yourself up for success and things that we personally do to set ourselves up for success before every wedding. And I, and we want to talk specifically, not only in like a personal sense, but also just in a business sense, how we prepare, um, you know, our gear, like Taylor said, and the communication. Um, so I think let's start off by saying that during the week of the wedding, I think it's really important that we are not bothering our clients and we're also not bothering our planners. By then, hopefully you'll have received the final timeline. You've given your thumbs up of approval and everything is dialed in. There shouldn't be much more that we're, you know, reaching back out to get additional information. We're just floating through the wedding, everything, all the boxes have been checked and, um, Yeah, so that week of the wedding, for us, all the communication has been, like I said, buttoned up. We're good to go. We'll see them on Friday for the welcome party or Saturday for the wedding. Um, What about you, Taylor? Yes, same. And this is one of those where um, I feel like letting go of control can kind of help you. And what I mean by that is we all love to send out questionnaires and things like that, but sometimes our clients are really busy or they forget or they just, for whatever reason, they don't fill out the questionnaire. And this is... 
this is that moment where it is like the moment of no return. Like I am not bugging my client to fill out that questionnaire. If they didn't do it, I just let go. Just let go. You can still do your job without knowing all those little tiny details. Um, So that's, it's a really great practice to just let it go. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I, I was like really, in the early years, I was like, so nervous about the fact that the client didn't fill out the questionnaire. And I think the questionnaire was kind of more formulated in a time where we weren't getting as detailed timelines from a planner or we weren't even working with a planner all the time. Maybe it was just a venue coordinator that sent us like a very generic timeline. And so the questionnaire helped to fill in the gaps and get a little bit more personalization from the client. And I've actually still held on to that questionnaire. Um, it's actually something too that we have included in our shop. Um, you have a, there's a link down in our show notes to our shop for that. And um, if you don't send out a questionnaire, I do think that it is really helpful. And I actually like to send out a questionnaire too, just as like a box checked that if there was any, you know, something issues, things that we missed, all that stuff, I like that I have all the bases covered, that I did my due diligence to learn as much as I could about the client's wedding day and what to have captured. And if I if they didn't fill it out, then I'm like, that's okay. I'm gonna do my best still, and I can still capture the wedding day well. But um, yeah, I'd highly recommend checking out a questionnaire or thinking about including a questionnaire in your workflow. And we also include in one of our email bundles where exactly is the appropriate time to introduce that questionnaire either to the client or to the planner. And so everything is streamlined and perfect. And yeah. I would say the only time maybe it would be appropriate to communicate with a planner that week leading up to the wedding would be A, if there is some sort of emergency and like something has changed last minute um you got sick or something big has happened and they need to know they should definitely be updated or if your planner is a friend and you want to just text them like maybe you know that they're going into production thursday um they're doing some sort of site build or something maybe just sending them like a hey just wanted to let you know i'm so so excited to work with you and i can't wait to see what you create um see you saturday morning let me know if you need anything um i think those are like two appropriate times where that communication the week leading up to the wedding would be okay. Yeah. I love that you do that. So you actually do that, Taylor? You'll send out like to plan your friends and stuff? Um, yeah, I have three friends, <laughs> like three planners that I'm like friends with, like we text on a regular basis and I would really only reserve that kind of communication to those three. That's but, cool. yeah. That's awesome. I should start doing that too. I'm going to adopt that practice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is like the best part of podcasts is like, I feel like the overarching topics are obviously great, but it's like these teeny tiny little like pieces of information that you can kind of comb through and adapt to your own business. Um, so there you go. The more you know. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. So basically communication has been all dialed in. We're good to go. We're leading up to the wedding day. We're doing the, we're doing the regular things. Like we're charging our batteries. We're making sure our cards are formatted. The wedding from before is backed up and ready to go. Um, Luckily, my husband does all of that stuff. Taylor, that's probably on you. Um, but it's I think me. Paul mm-hmm. and you have very similar personalities. So you guys are the right ones for the job. Um, I would be a complete mess. I'd be showing up to battery. No, I'm not going to say that that would happen. But I have heard horror stories <laughs> of, of um, filmmakers showing up with like their batteries not charged. They didn't realize that they weren't charged from the night before. Don't do that. You don't want that stress going into a wedding day. That is... It's Mm -mm. just so unnecessary and just, I think it's really important to have a workflow. Taylor, what's kind of your workflow as far as like getting the batteries charged, getting the things backed up, cards formatted, all that? Yeah. So the backup always happens like after the wedding that just happened, right? So like that's my like Sunday routine. So I'm dumping cards and I'm backing everything up. And because Canon has such huge file sizes, I mean, I'm shooting about a terabyte per wedding if it's a single day event, obviously more if it's multi-day. Um, and so it can pretty much take all day, but that next day is devoted to that. Um, so by the time I go to charge and get ready for my next wedding, that's all done. So I really don't have to worry about it. And I keep things like duplicated and duplicated again in a fireproof safe. Um, like I am not taking any chances when it comes to that. So that's all done. I go through all of my battery charging and um, formatting usually on Wednesday. Like I have like days of the week that I assign to each of these tasks. So I'll charge batteries and format all cards and replace batteries and like audio recorders on the Wednesday. Um, that way Thursday, um, I get to 
you know, that's when I like wipe down lenses and pack my bag very like systematically. Um, that way, Friday, I can bring all of my gear downstairs, stage it by the front door. That way, the morning of the wedding, I don't have to do any of those things. Um, but beyond gear, I feel like there's a few things leading up to the wedding day that you kind of have to plan in advance. And um, one of those things is like dry cleaning. Kelly, mm. I remember you mentioning to me that you have a dry cleaning routine. What does that look like? Again, this is Paul. He's my like, he's my <laughs> personal assistant. He just does so much for our business. Like, let's let's be real. Can we all can we all applaud Paul for all this? I'm just over here like color grading things and doing edits, but um, doing all the artsy. I want things. a Paul. Where can I get yeah. one for my business? <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, I don't. I feel like I don't appreciate appreciate him to his fullest. Um, but anyways, he. Um, He started dry cleaning his stuff mainly out of the realization that he was terrible at ironing. And I remember back in those days, he'd like get the ironing board out and he'd be ironing his dress shirt. I think at the time he still wasn't wearing like a full suit and I'd be over there trying to like iron my dress and it just like never really looked totally polished. Like I was never quite happy with it. And so, um, we'll take all of our stuff to the dry cleaners, whatever we need. And then he, he'll get it back like Wednesday or Thursday. And then basically we'll just like keep it in its neat little bag right before we like walk out the door. So it looks nice and pressed. Um, he actually won't even like put on his suit, um, or he'll put on like his pants, but he won't put on his dress shirt and jacket until like he's in valet kind of just to make sure that it doesn't like get wrinkled. He's not getting out of the car with like a wrinkled up jacket. So, um, we just feel like way more confident showing up to, um, a lot of times like a black tie wedding that we're shooting. So I think that, you know, those really small touches of maybe investing in dry cleaning for your, you know, your dresses or jumpsuits or anything like that is really important. Um, Also just ensuring like, okay, so I'm a blonde. If you're watching on YouTube, I have some roots right now. It's fine. Um, But I'm already like, I was just thinking today about when I need to like get in to get my hair done. Um, And I know that our first wedding of the year is going to be March 25th. So I'm going to make sure that I make an appointment the week before then. And so I have nice fresh hair to start the season and that I'm just feeling my best, looking my best. And um, yeah. Yeah, I love that. The hair is such an important, it's kind of like, I would say similar to like making sure um, a guy has like cleaned up if he has facial hair, like make make sure that's cleaned up. Like general general hygiene and upkeep is definitely um, that week leading up to the, to the wedding. Um, I, so one thing I used to do and I kind of stopped having it with having a newborn last year. Um, things are, are just chaos, you know, but um, I want to start again this year is getting my nails done the week of a wedding. Um, you had mentioned on a previous episode, and I thought it was such an excellent point that um, your hands are really like <laughs> kind of a key player on the wedding day. And yeah. so many people are going to be looking at your hands. And um, to me, I, f- I definitely feel like at this level of the market like it's truly all in the details and people can be very easily turned off by some um you know gnarly looking fingernails yeah yeah I I, yeah I'll even take it a step further and we can agree to disagree or those listening I think it's really important to just when because I get my nails done like Taylor said um the week leading up to a wedding right now mine are not done if you're on our YouTube channel um giving them a break for the off season but um but yeah, I always just kind of go with a neutral color. I don't really want to like like get people to focus on my nails. I don't have like crazy designs. I'm not painting them lime green. Like I just don't really want to bring attention to my hands. I want them to look polished and that maybe they would notice that they're nicely done, but I just want them to blend in. So I'm always just doing kind of a nude, um, a nude nail. And um, sorry guys listening, you're like, this is... This is really pointed towards me, but no. And also for the guys too, manicure is keeping their nails nice. Paul's good at that. He'll like give himself a manicure the week before the wedding or whatever week of. So yeah, all those little details that I think just really elevate your business, um, making a good lasting impression. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I will add to that. Um, This is for those who are not doing destination events. And I would actually love to talk about that. um, Because I think when you're flying to an event or maybe even driving like 10 hours, your routine is going to look a little bit different. But 
Um, I love running my car through the car wash um, a few days before the wedding. That's usually like a Wednesday thing too. Um, so I'll do that. And this is when I get the vacuum out and I'm vacuuming up all like the goldfish and whatever else my kid, <laughs> kid spilled in there. Taking, they love to like, they're like little trash monsters. They love just like shoving trash into like the car doors and everything. So like I go through and make sure everything's all um, tidy because there is nothing more mortifying than parking at a venue and having another vendor literally watch you get out of the car. Like, <laughs> I feel like the car tells so much about a person. And it's okay if your day-to-day life, especially if you have kids, um, things, you know, go a little bit unchecked. But when we're showing up to a very professional and, um, like, fancy, like, this is like a fancy event. Like, I think that we need to show a little bit of respect and put our best foot forward. And the vehicle is a big piece of that puzzle, so... Oh, yeah, That's for sure. Opinion. The car is... If a valet is, like, driving around your car, <laughs> there's, like, trash falling out. Oh, my gosh. Sorry, I'm, like, I cracking can't... myself up, just, like, the visual. <laughs> I cannot even. It's it's literally the worst. Like, there's been a couple of times where we just, like, have not had it in our week. Like, maybe we had a couple corporate shoots that week. Like, we're just kind of trying to keep our heads above water, and the wedding day comes up so quickly. And we're like, oh, crap, we haven't gotten the car washed. It's so mortifying when we're, like... I'm like over here, like trying to like stash things into the center console. Like it's so bad. I'm like, <laughs> like, don't look, don't look. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like so exposed. Um, but yeah, that's a really good point. The car. Um, we also have a dog that sheds a lot. Um, we have a Corgi and he sheds so much. And Paul, we keep lint rollers. Um, lint rollers are so handy. You guys like for sure, if you have a dog, keep a lint roller or if you don't have a dog and, um, keep a lint roller. I have a cat and it's the same struggle. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're literally lint rolling down like our think tank, our other bags, like, um, right before we're like wheeling it into the venue. Um, so yeah, just all those things. You just really want to maintain, um, if your brand is aligned in a way that is clean and all of that, then I think that that's something that is important too. And like, I don't know if we're like diving into a slightly different topic. Maybe Taylor could touch on this more in our next episode, but Taylor for Paul and I, it's like, it's always us, but for you, you utilize a variety of second shooters. Do you kind of like, do you kind of tell them the same things? Like do all the, that stuff? <sighs> Okay. So I try my hardest to not be a micromanager. And I actually know some of the people who have second shot for me listen to this. So hopefully they can attest to this, but, um, generally they're pretty good about like knowing what they need to wear. Um, I mean, I, I always prefer a suit, honestly, like I don't have females second shoot for me that often. They just, there's not a lot in my area. So it's usually guys. So they, they know they need to wear a suit. They know they need to look nice. And then, um, <clears throat> They know that I would like them to arrive like at least 15 minutes early um, and like I'll pay for them for the time if they're there early and like working, you know, like it's not like free time. But um, so they, they already have all that established. They have the timeline. I will have gotten them the timeline within like at least a week before the wedding. So they have all of this information um, and I am honestly like a crazy person texting them all morning, especially if this is a wedding that um, is really like, of course, all weddings are really important, but like if this is a new planner or one of those events are just, this just kind of next level. Like I will be texting them like, Hey, traffic is like this. Like, please make sure you leave enough time. Like, and I'm just like trying to keep them on the same page because obviously we're not like driving in the same car. Um, and so, yeah, I really just try to like keep tabs on them and open the lines of communication so that they feel like they can like be communicating with me as well. Um, because yeah, if traffic's bad and they're going to be 30 minutes late, like I don't want to be like guessing, like where are they or worried, like something bad happened. Like, um, I just want to be able to say, okay, that's fine. Just meet me at, at this location, like within the venue or what have you. Um, I don't know if that was like what you were asking. Um, but a lot of the times my second shooters are doing like multiple events in a weekend. So like, it's usually like, they just did an event like Friday night and now they're coming to help me on a Saturday. And so, um, I know they're tired, so I try not to like, I don't know, be on them too much. Yeah. I think that that is all really important. And I'm sure that your second shooters don't mind you like, you know, checking in on them and all that. It's a big day. There's a lot of pressures. So I think they understand. So now shifting focus kind of into like the mental, the mental headspace, getting your head in the game, all of that. There's, there's, little things that I think can really affect us. Um, one is 
I think that it's important to make sure that the week of the wedding leading up that you're trying to surround yourself with people in your life that are just really positive people that are there to cheer you on, that there's not a lot of drama, um, you know, in your life at that point, you don't need that. Um, so I, I kind of am a little bit more mindful of, you know, the people that I'm giving my time to that week and ensuring that it's just, I'm going into the, going into the wedding day with a clear head. Um, what about you, Taylor? Oh yeah. Um, (laughs) I'm definitely the kind of person who can, um, get in my own head a little bit too much. And it's, and I wish I actually don't like this about myself. I wish I wasn't so easily influenced by other people. Like I wish I had like a switch to just like turn that off and like (laughs) be okay with other people being crazy in my world. Uh, but no, I definitely have um, like rules. Like I, I straight up like won't talk to people on the phone on the way to a wedding. Like I'm driving like one, two, three hours by myself. Obviously I don't work with my husband or anything um, in the car. And that could be a great time to like call grandma and like catch up. But um, <laughs> I just know myself too well. And that is not really doing me a service to get into the correct mind space. Like I almost see it as like, this is gonna be so dramatic and I'm so sorry you guys but like I almost see it as like an athlete preparing for like the Olympics like what is Michael Phelps listening to in his headphones like while he walks up like to the starting block for like a big race right like he's not talking to his grandma like he's listening to what gets him like excited and um gets him in that correct mindset space for success so for me um I'm a big podcast listener um, and this is not the time for true crime. Um, <laughs> this is the time for like, um, like a really like positive, like mindset kind of podcasts or even like any like business or entrepreneurial like podcasts that talk about like customer service or things like that always help because it reminds me all these things that I know, but it puts them at the forefront of my mind so that I'm like cognizant of them throughout the wedding day. Yeah. So that's what I do. But I am actually really curious to hear, since you and Paul obviously, like, drive together, like, do you have certain, like, topics of conversation you usually talk about? Are you, like, game planning with him? Like, what does that drive look like for you? That is a great question. So because our business now has uh, evolved into being split between weddings and corporate commercial work, I am the main person for weddings. Paul is the main person for corporate commercial work. So a lot of times he doesn't know a lot about our clients. And honestly, because we're communicating with the planner so much, we don't really know much about them either. So maybe I have followed them on Instagram or, you know, a lot of times he's like, what do they look like on the way to the wedding? Like, we're like, you know, we have a, we have a ways to get there. So we're like learning more about them, all that stuff. Um, if they've filled out a questionnaire, I'll go over the questionnaire with that, with him. But, um, yeah, we, he's very big on like no phone calls either on the way to the wedding, like to and from like he, on the way there, he's like head in the game. He, he doesn't want to hear like my, my chatter with like a friend or any drama (laughs) or anything like that. And then on the way home, he, he wants to like decompress. Like we want to go to in and out together. We want to eat our burgers in silence and not have any phone calls going on. So yeah, we just, um, it's fun doing it together, but yeah, there has been, we have had to have conversations about what is draining to that person or like things that really affects their headspace going into a wedding. And so just, you know, over 13 years, we've learned what works and what doesn't. It's also funny too, because when you were talking about earlier, like meticulously putting your stuff in all the right like places uh, at the end of the wedding day, like I am not allowed to like pack the bags because he has a specific order in which like he likes to pack the bags like even like which tripods and light stands like lay on top of each other and so I'm always just over there like chatting it up with the planner just like getting to know her a little bit more or him a little bit more and then Paul's over there like you know getting all the bags prepped and he's like don't touch anything you're gonna mess it up <laughs> so uh it's a good mm-hmm. it's a good flow but um yeah Yeah. It's like having a mental checklist that only you know um, is like the method, right? Like I can just look at the bag and be like, I'm missing a lens or, oh, where's that recorder or what, you know what I mean? And if I've actually had a few times where like I'll have a second shooter, like pack up my stuff and I'm like texting them them the next day. I'm like, hey, where's this? Like, I don't see it. Like it's not in in its normal spot or um, I don't know, different things like that. And it's, um, 
very nerve <laughs> nerve wracking, especially if you have a double header or it's like a multi day event. Like the last thing you want is to be panicking because you can't find a certain thing. And honestly, like I have left chargers behind. Like I always, so I only have. I think I have six 1DX Mark II batteries, but I shoot with two 1DX Mark IIs. And so I'm always like charging batteries. Like I bring two chargers and like there's always something on the charger. And if I were to forget that, like I would be mortified. Like I would be driving two hours the next day to go grab it because I just don't want to have to order a new one. Um, but yeah, having having methods is really, really important I would say and I wish again I'm just gonna say like I wish I had my own Paul to to come do all my stuff for me because I would love to be chatting with the planner and networking at the end of an event instead um so those are the woes of a solo person yeah but husband and wife teams like they have their things too but it's all good Um, so one other thing that I wanted to talk about, I don't know if you guys listening, like have kids yet, or if you don't have kids yet, if you don't yet, and you plan to someday down the road, I think that one of the things and learn it, hear it from me first, I don't know what Taylor's workflow is, but I have realized that I can better serve my clients. I'm more prepared for a wedding day. I'm refreshed and ready to go when I have handed my kids off to grandma and grandpa or a nanny or whoever's watching them um, the night before. So maybe that means like if Paul and I are traveling, we'll like head down to like head up to Santa Barbara um, or down to San Diego uh, the night before and they'll be at home or we're having grandma and grandpa grab them before, like just having like an empty house and just being able to focus just on like what I need to do and prepare myself and our bags and all that stuff. Like it's so chaotic to me to have to like cook breakfast for two kids and like have the house a mess, like while I'm trying to get ready. So, um, that was kind of a, it was okay when we had like our, just our son, but Taylor and I had babies like around the same time last year right? It was January for you? December. December. Close, okay. Yeah. And then I was end of, mm-hmm. and then I had our daughter end of February. So yeah, pretty much the same time. And so when two kids came in the picture, it was like a whole game changer for me. I had to like realize like how to prioritize my mental health. And one of the things was, is like waking up either at a hotel or in our home kid free. So that's been really, that's been something that we've had to make a priority and it's been really a game changer for our business. Mm, I am jealous. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I have a lot of thoughts about this. Um, in a perfect world, like, yes, I would love to do that. My, okay. So obviously like I'm not in business with my husband, like he is not part of the picture. So it wouldn't make sense to like send our kids off because why would we like he's home. Right. But like I am like throughout the week, like the primary caregiver. So all of those responsibilities do fall on me typically. Like, of course he's capable of like making breakfast, but like I wake up early. I'm just, I'm a morning person. It just is naturally something that I do, but, um, it, I'm not going to lie. Like it is very stressful. Like if I, if I know I have to like beat traffic to get down to Napa and I have to leave by 9 AM, um, and I am doing all the things and trying to get myself ready. It is so stressful. Um, throw in a newborn and getting like spit up on in your like, black work clothes like as you're walking out the door trying to say goodbye forget it um Mm -hmm. anyway I'm just (laughs) I know that we're not the only ones with babies so if you are in that season of life just please know that um number one you're not alone um you're absolutely not alone and if you feel stressed out like that's okay and that is so understandable and we can relate trust Mm me um but number two that it is a season and it gets easier I promise um so yeah that is like hard. And then my husband actually has a very non-traditional work schedule. And so there's a lot of times where he's not home or he just worked overnight and he's still sleeping or anyway. So I need to get better about that because I do think that it would be very beneficial to not have the kids around, honestly, like the morning of the wedding. Um, and that is a perk of more destination weddings. I don't really travel outside of California much, um, for weddings. I do have one in Texas this year, but, um, even just hopping down, um, like on a plane to go to like Ohio Valley or Santa Barbara or anywhere like around there. Um, it is kind of a luxury to fly in the night before and have like a meal by myself and breakfast by myself and just focus on the task at hand. So I'm a rambler. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, I am too. (laughs) 
Thanks for thanks for sticking with us, guys, in our in our yeah. uh, all of our things. But no, that'd be good. Like even if he like took them off to the park while you hopped in the shower, did your hair and makeup. Like, um, I feel like whenever we can't get the kids like off to someone the night before for whatever reason, then it kind of turns into like me doing my makeup in the car on the way to the wedding. And I mean, I've gotten used to it, but it's not totally ideal. It would nice. It would be nice to like be able to sit down and have like a nice relaxing moment doing my makeup and thinking about the day ahead and making my little mental checklists in my head. But with kids, it's not always possible. So like Taylor said, if you're in that like toddler baby phase, it is not for the faint of heart and we are with you. So it's just, you know, Taylor, Taylor has older ones now, so she knows that it's gotten a little bit easier. I'm still like, I don't know if it's going to get better with my three-year-old and my uh, one-year-old, but we'll, we'll get there, I guess. My, my last point, sorry, I have one more point. No, go, go, go. <laughs> and this is for everyone who finds yourself getting hangry or um, if you get like the shakes, if it's been too long since you've eaten. Um, I think it's really smart to not count on a vendor meal. Like don't, don't be like, cool, I get to eat at seven o'clock tonight because that meal may never come or you may have to work through it. We never really know. So I'm huge on packing a ton of snacks. I pack a little lunchbox with like basic food, like a peanut butter jelly sandwich and a cliff bar and applesauce, whatever snacks my kids have. And that will be like the last thing um, that I will say about that is like, be prepared with the food, especially if you know yourself and if you start getting a little cranky or are not performing at your best when you're really, really hungry, I will leave you with that. Hmm. That's a good one. Yeah. Snacks are key. You never know when those vendor meals are going to come. And I just feel like lately, like there's so many other things in our, like in these big luxury events that we're filming that like, I kind of don't want to be pulled away to have to eat. Like I kind of just want to like eat a quick like protein bar on the go and call it good. And then, like I said, get in and out on the way home. I mean, I think it's like going to be way better than any vendor meal that we're going to get. So why not? Thank you for joining us in this conversation. If you enjoyed this episode, please help us reach more filmmakers just like you by taking a screenshot and sharing it on social media. Don't forget to tag us at The Level Up Co. And join us again next week, same time, same place, as we continue to level up the industry together. 